Today, I'm flying on board Africa's largest airline, Ethiopian, in their Cloud9 business class. I'll be trying the backbone of their fleet, the Boeing Dreamliner, the bed, food, champagne, and overall experience of this unique airline. And let's find out why I think this could be Africa's best business class. Ethiopian have quite the variety of aircraft, including the A350, 777, and a multitude of Dreamliners. Interestingly, all these business class cabins are quite different, ranging from a competitive 121 to an aging 232 setup, so it's kind of potluck to which you'll get. In fact, today's flight is no exception. The Dreamliner was swapped out for another variation the day before my departure. So, if, like me, you know little about Ethiopian Airlines, what's their background? They've been in the skies for over 75 years, founded in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa. They've come a long way from their first international flight to Nairobi in 1946, and now serve 127 destinations such as London, Tokyo, and of course a vast array of the African continent. Today, however, I'll be taking perhaps the most unique flight on their route network, but in order to catch this, I need to get over to Norway. Let's pick up my travels in Athens, Greece, on an airline I doubt any of you would expect to see on the channel. Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. You join me today at Athens International Airport where we're starting the crazy journey to go and fly Ethiopian. So we are flying for the first flight of the day. We're flying Norwegian, which is an interesting one seeing as they actually went almost, well, I think they actually did go bankrupt. So let's head over to the check-in desk now. Uh, Thankfully, I can confirm they do exist again, but only with a smaller operation. I all checked in for my flight. I was a little bit concerned about this one. Traveling a lot in Europe at this moment in time, being from the UK, does cause a few issues. Um, if you're actually in the EU, you can use a, an EU COVID passport, but because I'm not in the EU, being in the UK left last year, I don't actually have a recognized COVID passport, which does cause a couple of issues. Thankfully, all okay. Right, let's head over to the gate now. A brief x-ray later and I'm over to the departure gate. No lounge of course, it's a low cost carrier. I'm glad to see Norwegian is kind of back. The flight seems pretty full, but I apparently have priority boarding today. Hello. Hello. Right, so time to go get on board. The first flight of today, of course, only the uh, small one. Is the big one the big event is coming up in norway well as i said something quite out of place on the channel a dip into coach life given the dire nature of european business class though this is hardly any difference well until i noticed the filthy state of the cabin i guess that's what 60 bucks gets you as i settle in and buckle my seatbelt, the safety demo is done and we push back off stand it's not long before we're airborne, off on a near four hour economy saga to Norway. To be honest with you, I'm shattered from my previous flights, so largely slept throughout this flight. Before we land into Norway and with it beginning our Ethiopian adventure, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, NordVPN. It goes without saying, I travel a lot, using countless unsecured internet hotspots in airline lounges, hotels, and even bars. For years now, I've been using NordVPN to protect my privacy online. It's not just for privacy though, but to keep in contact with my friends and family back home in parts of the world where FaceTime and WhatsApp are blocked, such as in Dubai. With NordVPN, I can change my location back to the UK and continue to use these block services unrestricted. This also means I can continue to watch my favourite TV shows and even sports as to all intents and purposes, my computer is virtually based in the UK now. If you don't use a VPN to protect your privacy at home or when you travel, right now you can get yourself the Black Friday deal. Just head to nordvpn.com slash trendy to get a two year plan plus one additional month free with a huge discount. Remember this comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. Thanks again to NordVPN for making this video possible. Right guys, so welcome to Oslo, Norway. After experiencing quite the mess at having to technically enter Norway when I'm not allowed to, I'm through landside and heading up to departures. Let's go and find out where the Ethiopian check-in desk is, probably over this way. Uh, let's go and find it out and uh, check into the flight and then head over to the gate. Interestingly today, it's a really unique flight and it's what they call a fifth freedom flight. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute when we get over to the gate. It appears to be out of all of the airlines flying, Ethiopian is the only one that is at the complete opposite end of the terminal. And if you think I'm exaggerating, 
and you see all the arrows. The only one that's not going to be that way, which is this way, the other side, is the Ethiopian. For goodness sake, get my steps in. It needs to be done, to be fair. Check-in wasn't terribly busy, and I'm sorted swiftly, which is good because I don't have a great deal of time here. Right, all checked in to Cloud9 Business Class. Goodness me, what a name. I mean, most airlines do just call it business class, but happy with Cloud9, let's hope it is Cloud9. I'm actually really, really excited about this because it's a completely new airline for me. It's on an interesting route, of course, but I'm just super excited to experience it. Now comes the moment of truth. Will Ethiopian have paid for fast track security? Let's go try it out. Yeah, good. A few moments later. So it is only at this point that I realise that the SAS lounge, which I would have had access to behind me here, is actually open in the domestic section. Of course, I'm not going to be flying domestically, so that means I can't access it. And typically within the international section, the SAS Star Alliance lounge remains closed. What a shame. So interestingly, my Ethiopian flight appears to have begun boarding some one and a half hours before departure. I guess it's to encourage people to get themselves through passport control, which as I know, can take some time. Right, all through, and of course, the only busy gate is mine. As I head to the front of the queue, it seems there's no visible Cloud9 boarding. I inquire, and after a quick document check, I'm promptly let through into the boarding area. And I'm met by the beautiful Boeing 787-8. Sadly, not the Dash 9 I was hoping for, but hey. It's our time. We kindly ask all other passengers. Finally, after that long trip across Europe today, it's time to get on board Ethiopian for the first time. Can you tell I'm excited? It seems pretty busy heading down the jet bridge, but as you'll see, that couldn't be further from reality in business class. I'm warmly welcomed on board, and for the first time in a while, feels like I'm genuinely welcome. I guess it's the famed Ethiopian hospitality. I'm directed to my seat, and another crew member welcomes me. I could get used to this. It's a shame I'm flying United soon. After stowing my bag in the the overhead bin, I settle down in the last row of business class, and I'm immediately presented with a bottle of water. There is, however, a caveat to this seat, which you've probably already noticed. So guys, I've made a bit of a grave error with my seating choice today, by the way, love the music. One of my personal favorites. But yeah, I made a bit of an error where I chose the only row uh, with this window missing. Um, complete oversight by me. I did check uh, Seat Guru, which is what I usually use, but for some reason it didn't say it. But again, these aircraft do get swapped out all the time. After quenching my thirst from a day of travel with my provided water, I'm poured a delicious glass of champagne. Ethiopian served Hattinger on this sector, which goes down brilliantly. I'm also provided with a green amenity kit, along with yet more green bedding. The pillow they provide is super squashy, which I love. As you can see from today's business class cabin, it's actually pretty quiet, and with boarding nearly complete, the crew gain yet another tick in the box for proactivity. So the crew have been really good, and because it's quite an empty cabin, they've said that I'm able to move away from the windowless seat to the one in front. So let's move to one with some actual windows. Let's get settled into cloud nine. Did they tell you it's free? Yeah, they just said to me. Yeah, I told to, to check in the system. Thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate it. As I settle into my new seat, I'm offered another drink, going for an OJ this time. Thankfully, it was the freshly squeezed variety and not the concentrated rubbish you'll get at a free hotel breakfast. It's not long before the safety video is screened, I get my seatbelt on, and we begin to push back, taxiing out to the runway. You can see here just how quiet it is in the cabin today. However, as we head out to the runway, you'll see why, and also how this is such a unique route. Of course, being a fifth freedom route, we're actually flying just to Sweden today, some 500 kilometers away, or in Dreamliner timings, just 45 minutes. This has to be my shortest Dreamliner flight. So what do they actually offer on a flight of this length? Well, as you've seen already, 222 angle flat business class seating, not the most competitive by any stretch, but amazing for this length of flight. There are, however, signs this cabin is aging quite badly. I've not seen too much duct tape on a plane before, not that reassuring. Okay, so it's a bit rough around the edges, but it's got a certain charm to it. Now, food service was pretty non-existent, but I won't knock them for a 45 minute hop. 
I was provided with these olive oil breadstick bites, well, a couple actually, and frequently replenished soft drinks. More booze was of course available. I think we know what time it is. It's time for the loo review, of course. There are two loos located to the front of the business class cabin. These are clean but basic with no premium finishes. There's just some standard soap and the only real addition are these packets of hand sanitizer. Oh, and a sign not to throw solid waste in the bog. <laughs> Okay, let's head back to my seat. Aware this isn't a long flight, but for reference, we really need to get the bed out. Now, being angle flat, this is never going to rival the likes of Q-Suites, but take an airline like Emirates, they actually have angle flat beds across most of their 777 fleet. What I will say though, is once the bed is made up and you get in with the squashy pillow and fetching green blanket to boot, it's pretty comfy. My largest issue here would be if I was traveling solo and having a stranger right next to me, but in terms of comfort, I could actually sleep well here. As we begin to start our descent into Stockholm, I'd like to explain my rationale for stating Ethiopian is Africa's best business class, when clearly the hardware is not that great. Well, for starters, this is an airline which operates throughout Africa, which unfortunately is notorious for having some pretty poor airlines. Take my friend Josh Cahill, for example, and his experience on Tunis Air, or the frequent horror reviews which Egypt Air gets on their long haul operations. Ethiopian to me is quirky, and yes it has its flaws, but makes up for it with its charm and service, and this is a key standout for me. Name another African carrier which has the route network, service level, and sheer amount of modern aircraft as ET. But hey, let me know what you think. Have you flown Ethiopian before? Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll catch you all again next week.